Okay, we're live. Um, hi everyone, I'm Hai Jun from Luxitune. Um, coming to you live from New York City. Um, hi, Maxi. Oh, hi. <laughs> that was fast. Yeah. I'm Hooray. getting better at this. <laughs> we're good. I haven't done this in so long. I'm just <laughs> trying to remember what my setup was. That's okay. <laughs> I had to get the, yo the yoga block out <laughs> for balance. But I think, okay, I will just sit closer. <laughs> okay. Hey, so, this is my fourth IG live for Luxitune. So uh, I'm not sideways this time, thankfully. <laughs> and uh, you look great. Uh, so everyone, hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, everyone's waving. Uh, I have with us. Uh, for our Lux artists of Luxitune IG Live series. This is our fourth one. And we have um, one of my favorite violinists, um, Maxine Kwok from London Symphony Orchestra. She's uh, joining live from London, so there's a time difference. So thank you, join <laughs> us. But thank you. Welcome, Maxine. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it's evening here. I mean, it gets dark so early now anyway, um, but it's a lovely festive feel. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet. I know, at 4.30, does it get dark around 4? Already at 4, literally 4 o'clock. Wow. Like, yeah, it's like suddenly, but then there's so many lights now outside, it, it makes me very happy. And oh, good. I've got my tree up and everything, so. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's almost December. But I, I thought I won't I won't sit in front of it because you might be like, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I love festivities. Um, uh, <laughs> did you have a nice uh, weekend? I did. I did. We weren't working um, actually, which um, for musicians obviously is quite unusual. <laughs> um, so I went to see my parents, and which was really 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 lovely to see them um, mm -hmm. and then in December fingers crossed um, is really quite busy for the orchestra um, obviously you know <laughs> we all know how things are at the moment yes be set in stone uh, it's very hard to make a plan you know for concerts and if you know the 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 whole point of people being in a big space all together is 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 hard to sort of manage but we you know we so desperately want to be still mm -hmm. on stage playing music for people and it's it's just so important so fingers crossed that it can safely yes really. <laughs> i'm optimistic oh <laughs> I, I mean you know we we play in masks all the time so I'm quite I'm not very used to seeing the all of my face in one go because every anything anyone will have watched from the LSO will pretty much since this all started um we all see that that we we wear masks um so it's it's a way for us to uh still sit together again mm -hmm. and have more people on stage because you can't just for two years play Haydn and Mozart and <laughs> Even, you know, you want to get back to a big repertoire, yes. which means close together. And certainly for us, masks seems to have um, very much uh, been a, a really good COVID mitigation. So fingers crossed we can we can keep going. And, uh, you know, it's so important. <laughs> it really is. God, I mean, I, I, I mean, it's just it's only been like a minute since we're all able to start going to see performances, live performances. So yes, yeah. for sure. Well, um, <laughs> uh, I wanted to um, just kind of bring it back to what, what exciting um, performances and projects you've been working on. I know it's been a lot, uh, but lately I saw something very exciting, at least, at least for me. Um, I see that you were performing with Adele oh, yeah. <laughs> with the orchestra. <laughs> it the wasn't Adele. Actually, yeah, it wasn't actually um an, with the for the orchestra. I um I, I was asked by um a friend, uh Carenza Peacock, who will probably contact you because she was very interested in the Luxitune products. And she oh. um 
place in all of Adele's shows and LA and tour, etc. So she called me up and said, are you free? And I was like, oh, actually, I'm free. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and um, it was great fun. Obviously, you know, we, we have done, you know, sort of pop things and kind of, um, you know, it's not all classical that we do in, in the orchestra um, before, but it, it was really fun to do something quite unusual and obviously backing someone who is so well known. I mean, I, I confess, I did not know a lot of Adele songs before um, the show. I knew all the sort of super famous ones. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was great. It was great fun, had, had really, um, you know, a, a really, really fun time. Um, there were some really lovely arrangements actually um, for, it was just a small string group and we were kind of under, in the pit, it was in the London's Palladium. It's a very, very famous theater. And she was on stage just above us. So I could look up and go, wow, <laughs> like really amazing. And um, for me, I, everyone was laughing because it was kind of like being in some kind of um, detox therapy for me because everyone knows I love taking photos. I love um, just capturing moments and selfies and stuff. And we were very much told, you know, this is no photo opportunity <laughs> situation. And there, and there were so many famous people and celebrities there. So I was like, Ooh, it was just like, yeah, I just keep it in my mind and remind, remember it in my mind. And it was, um, and it went out on TV two weeks after. And, and amazingly enough, I did watch it and my parents watched it and I missed the moment I was on the screen. Oh. <laughs> For me, actually, they, they didn't show you, this was the moment. It was like, but um, so many people messaged me straight away and going, I think I just saw you on TV. And I thought, I didn't even see it. I was probably at that moment cutting into some food and just eating it. And I <laughs> um, so that was my sort of point one second of, of, being on TV with with Adele, if you like, uh, but great fun. I mean, that's the great thing about um, the music, music world and the jobs we do is um, they there's so much variety. You know, mm -hmm. you'll be Beethoven's Eroica, and then the next day be you know play, accompanying Adele on live on stage and things like that, and then um, you know next day hearing. 13 young violinists play an audition and things so it's there's so much um variety in in my life at least so i, I find mm -hmm. it I find it very interesting no no weeks are ever the same which when people ask me what's your what's your job like what what you know what do you usually do it's it's like oh gosh i can't really sort of um describe a typical week because it doesn't really work like that mm -hmm. and certainly not in the last 18 months um nothing has been remotely typical mm -hmm. um but you know to be working is is already a huge huge um bonus yes of course for sure i, I mean life of a musician is also uh especially um with an or major orchestra i i I did not realize how um, exciting <laughs> it could be uh, that it was, uh, especially when, you know, things are all okay and you're able to travel, then you're, you know, between recording and traveling all across the world. <laughs> it's really quite exciting. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I love the travel. Um, obviously, it, we missed many, many, many trips last mm -hmm. year, but from, we have been able to actually go around Europe um, which has been very, very just amazing to just be in a different place, see something different, visit the concert halls we love again, you know, the Elb Philharmonie, just just great. And, and in Berlin, so things that were second nature to us all the time. It was like we're just traveling next week and, and, and because it stopped for so long. And then when it came back this season, it was like, wow. Um, I mean, obviously there are so many <laughs> things to motivate, you know, a lot more paperwork involved oh, now. Wow. <laughs> so, timing your tests and then the reg, you know, so many tests and, mm -hmm. um, you know, making sure you've got so many masks with you, different countries have different rulings. Oh. So there are, yeah, it, it's, there was a bit more <laughs> to think about, but you know, how wonderful to just, have that sense again of being able to 
you know, take music around the world and to a live audience, because that's kind of what um, I think musicians miss. You know, it's great to have online um, projects and we, we did a lot of streaming and stuff, but um, from a communicative point of view, if you don't feel you're playing to an audience, there's something <laughs> that's rather lacking uh, and you, you can't, you just feel this slight lack of expression. Um, so obviously if there's no choice, that's fine, but to have that back and see audiences sitting there and they really want to be there, oh, it's, it's so indescribable. I mean, I, I cried the first time we had audience back. Oh, um, I got, <laughs> it, it's just, you know, it is kind of, I, I wouldn't say I ever took my job for granted. I, I love what I do. I really appreciate it. Um, but it, it really, having it stripped away from you in that manner with almost like no warning, it's just like you don't come to work tomorrow and for five months you, you don't. Yeah. Um, it, it really brings it home when you actually appreciate everything that, that you get from it. <laughs> so. Yes, for sure. Just a minute. I want I want to be better about replying to certain comments. There's a P Boney 572 says hello Maxine and guest from Canada with a wave. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, Canada, very nice. Um have you there a question or uh, just a hello? <laughs> <laughs> right, if, the, if this is your chance if you have any questions anyone who's watching if you have any questions uh maybe we should go dive right into um oh hi Rizwan a uh, friend he's a violist he says hi to you and me um so uh, you uh, would you would you be willing to share some orchestral excerpts or and how you teach them uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go right in <laughs> get to the point <laughs> whatever you'd like to share with us I think it'd be very valuable oh yes this is something that I have become quite um I suppose passionate about in the last few years um I mean I had my 20th anniversary in, in the orchestra in September so, <laughs> so, I'm so, so I, you know, I thought to myself gosh I'm, I'm not really new anymore um and obviously that means I've heard a lot of um people audition for the orchestra and lots of student auditions and things and I think a lot of the time, what really struck me was, you know, so many fantastic players out there, but they just hadn't really got the whole point of, of auditioning. And it was always such a shame. What what the huge sort of trend I, we would see is, you know, people would come in and pretty much for every instrument, you would probably play, you know, two contrasting things. So um, for violins, Mozart, concerto, and... Uh, you know, another big movement of a different, a contrasting concerto, and then orchestral excerpts. You would have people who are just playing the most amazing orchestra, um, amazing concertos, and like, wow, such fantastic playing. And then you would hear orchestral excerpts, and you would be like, why didn't this person prepare these properly? Um, mm. At the end of the day, this is this is the bread and butter of what you're going to be doing. You know, I'm not playing concertos, you know, for the last 20 years. I'm playing the the big orchestral repertoire. And that's what I want um, to really hear well played in an audition. So um, certainly with, for example, with the LSO, we have something called the String Experience Scheme, which is I, I came through that. I, I did that as a as a student mm -hmm. and it was an extremely um, worthy program which has actually had quite a lot of um, recruitment through. Quite a few of um, the string players have come through the scheme. It's a very interesting way of seeing how professional orchestra works and you, you know, you get feedback from the players. You're treated like a professional when you come in. Oh, so, um, so obviously it, I, for me, it's wonderful having done the scheme and then for the last few years to have been the first violin mentor of it, which sounds very grand, but it's really just means you're auditioning um, the students and kind of taking care of them when they come in and mm -hmm. see with somebody and making sure they get a report. Um, and then in the last few years, we, because I was, you know, we were seeing this trend of 
of students coming and playing really well, but perhaps their teacher was not from an orchestra background mm -hmm. or they didn't really get that why these were there and or were just not that bothered. I mean, I was very lucky in my whole um, student career. I, I had three wonderful teachers all of whom had very distinguished orchestral careers. So they, and, they, and I knew I wanted to be in an orchestra from a very early age. So I was very much like orchestra, orchestra, and they, they very right. much. Had. But I do understand, you know, you, you come from somewhere, you, you end up at a music college, your teacher is, is preparing you for exams, your final recital, you know, and you say, oh, I need to learn this four, four lines of Brahms and I need to learn this, you know, first page of Don Juan. And they're a bit like, what? I'm not going to spend time doing this. Um, so this was a kind of trend we were seeing of people who were totally able, but just had no way understanding of how to prepare or would obviously prepare them two days in advance Ooh. of the audition. So we had started going in and doing a workshop. Um, so all the uh, students who wanted to or who were selected in their own colleges to um, audition for the string scheme um, we we would go in and take different excerpts um, and show them how to work through them so you we wouldn't be like teaching them the ones they were going to play in the audition because sorry I suppose it's not really fair <laughs> but it, it we wanted to give them an idea of why certain things are given because you know, you know, you might get any auction in the world is going to give you some kind of booklet of, of auditions, and um, excerpts. And sometimes you look through and you think, well, I can sight read that or, you know, this and that. But it is a, a good friend said to me and we used to do a workshop together. And she, she said, it is really like being some kind of detective. You actually have to work out why that excerpt has been given. You know, you think, oh, that's easy. I wouldn't you know what why is why what's the problem with that you just have to work out why um and and it may be something where it's actually under pressure you the your tempo could easily start rushing um it could be you know a, quite an awkward bow stroke and you're just kind of cheating by doing it any old how so that's a lot of the first points are just realizing with an intelligence about what is required um, and another thing that always absolutely astounds me is the amount of people that play the excerpts who obviously have never listened to the piece before mm. and it's oh it, it's so shocking because you know I grew up in an age where you know if I had an excerpt from something I had to go and buy the whole CD in order to just hear a bit I mean, these days it's, you know, there's YouTube, Spotify, any, you can hear so many versions for free of mm. things. So there's no excuse about not knowing what the tempo should be, the stylistic type. Oh, hello. Oh, <laughs> that's my cat. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> to get into an orchestra. Um, but, you, you know, that's the first, you know, you hear people and they play very obvious wrong notes or completely wrong style or tempo. And, and it's like, you think, why didn't you just even have a listen? It, it's, it's amazing to say, but it's so obvious when someone knows the piece, like has actually taken the time to work out what else is going on as, as they're playing it. Obviously, in an orchestra, you, you practice your own part, but it's not all about you. It's it's the collective. It's everything um, coming together to form something. But in an audition, of course, it feels completely wrong to play these things alone. But it's the only way we really have of of deciphering whether you have different ways of playing stylistically, and that you play in tune with a good sound, things like that. So I think. It's, and I, I would also, I know it's just such a horrible thing to say to people. And I've written it on so many reports, hundreds of reports that I write over the years, but things like, you know, excerpts that you get, it's often really important to just practice them with a metronome. I mean, no, it's just, I know me metronome practice is really, really <laughs> grim, but 
it's one of those things like in an audition, nobody's like going, yay, I've got an audition. I can't wait to go in there. I went, well, if you do, that's great. But most <laughs> people feel anxious and uncomfortable. Um, you know, I feel like I'm on the panel and I, people walk in, I think, oh God, I hope they're going to do well. Because of course I want people to play well because I know what it's like to feel this next 12, 15 minutes could be a huge part of my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, you know, I'm always trying to give people good vibes and give them a big smile. Um, but it's so important that you solidify the excerpt so much in your mind that even with ev ev all the everything that's being bombarded in your brain during an audition where you think, oh, my God, I can't do this, I'm cold, I'm this and that, mm -hmm. that there's something in you that just keeps that tempo steady. Because, of course, most people will rush because your heart rate's gone your adrenaline is going you just feel uncomfortable and you just want to get out of there and definitely i think if you've practiced something slowly with a metronome and you build it up and you don't have to you don't have to con concertize things all the time this is something that i think is very important i don't teach but i remember you know my teachers saying to me you know it's not all about you know doing the great performance while you're practicing at home. You just have to get the bits that are not so good that, and get them as good as, as everything else. It's not about just playing through and thinking, oh yeah, that sounds really good. So it's, that is really important because the moment you hear someone rushing through an exit, you think like if I was sitting with someone like that, you know, if it was, mm. I don't know, human too, da, 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 you know, oh, I'm not going to play that. Um, but it's, you know, if you hear someone who literally goes through and gets faster and faster, you think, you know, I might be sitting in a section of 16 people. And if that person's doing that, it's going to totally rock the boat. So it's things like um, that are important. Um, I, and I always say to in the workshops don't feel uncomfortable if you get asked to repeat something mm. because i i have in the past you know said to somebody actually you're playing that like way too fast can you start again just take the tempo down and also it's pianissimo so you know it shouldn't be a, at that moment you shouldn't fall to pieces i probably wouldn't ask if i didn't think you could do it it's not a trick it's not like designed to make you feel really crap about yourself mm, okay I, I would if i didn't think you could do it i probably wouldn't even bother asking so you should never feel that is a negative thing i mean hopefully you wouldn't have to be asked because you've got the right you know you know how something is meant to be but if i think someone might have just kind of got the wrong end of the stick about an excerpt um then i will just want to see whether they can turn it around in a in a very short space of time and that can be to somebody's um you know that can be a really positive thing it, it really doesn't mean it's it's a negative um thing one question i get asked a lot from students um is obviously in orchestral excerpts you have really wide ranging dynamics from you know whether it's triple piano and then it's supposed to be triple forte are you meant to play how you would feel like in the orchestra because obviously there's times where you're the conductor is like you know and you're just ghosting it you know you're literally pretending mm -hmm. and there's times where you're playing really like massive and stuff and i just think it if you just keep everything within some kind of context i mean i don't want someone playing a triple piano where i can't hear them but i want to be aware that i know that they know this is meant to be like super soft and it's not a soloist's piano that's hitting the back of a hall or something. Mm. So, you know, these are always intelligent questions I get asked. And I think, yes, that is, it's a good thing to ask because it's, it's a different, you know, you think, oh, am I supposed to really smash it out? I mean, most people would probably play the first, mo uh, first page of Don Juan for an audition anywhere around the world. Of course, it's, it's pretty difficult. And most of it is like super loud. And I, I would always say to people, you know, also think about the room you're in. Um, you know, I heard in the last 10 days, two weeks, 35 violin auditions in varying 
rooms going from a hall to quite a small practice room and it's I I always think it's better that you know you don't have to blast my ears off if it's what it's about you know if it's the small room and you know I want I want to it you know you you can't just play mezzo forte there has to be the graduation between whether you something is quite soft but it doesn't have to be if you're in a small room you do not play your entire greatest biggest sound mm -hmm. it, it's just going to come across as being very strident and that just doesn't work in an audition because i think it, it's always boils down to the way i sit it's like would i do i want to sit with this person am i is this person, you know are we gonna you know, it doesn't matter. I, I don't mind if stylistically the person has a different way of interpreting their Mozart or they don't play their Tchaikovsky Sibelius like I do. That doesn't matter to me. But I want to know that they 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 hold a good tempo, they play in tune and they make a nice sound. It's it's it. Those are the sort of real kind of characteristics of, I think, what people really look for. So I definitely you know because if an audition is over loud it's really quite painful and even if the playing is fantastic it's very hard to keep yourself because engaged because you think oh it's just like really hurting so you know i'm not advising anyone just tickling the playing but just to be very aware that it's you know you're not in carnegie hall <laughs> you're generally in a much smaller space you don't need to be sort of getting the person in in row 50 mm -hmm. um so that, <laughs> that to me is, is very, very important. I mean, these are things that I kind of wish. Uh, they should you know, be taught this, yeah, as like part of the school curriculum or something, right? <laughs> yeah, because so many people, they're so close to being there and that's what is often so tragic. And that can be the difference between someone getting the opportunity or not. And, and it really, for me, it's much more weighted. I, I don't mind so much, you know, if someone makes slips in their, in their concerto movements, you know, we all make mistakes. It's, it, it's a pressurized um, situation, but if someone plays, you know, then their orchestral excerpts with great intelligence and understanding of what is actually necessary, I will prefer that absolutely hands down to somebody who is just an incredible concerto, but, obviously just has no clue about how to put together an orchestral excerpt. And it, it is so important. I mean, some um, someone came to play to me once who was doing an audition and they only asked for orchestral excerpts. So these these things are, are really so, you know, vital um, because, you know, like I say, how often have I ever had to play the first three pages of the Sibelius in my life, um, you know, since I left college. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Brahms symphonies, all these sorts of things, they they are the the absolute grass roots of everything that you will do day in, day out. And if you can impress a panel, you know, you can't be expected to have played, you know, most of the time I'd never played any of those pieces before. If you're lucky, you might have come across it in the youth orchestra or something and that's great if you have because you're you know you're halfway there but if you haven't then you just need to take the time and and just be a bit clever with thinking okay yeah I'm really going to listen to these I won't just listen to one recording in case it's the recording that is sort of like way too fast or something but I will just sort of get a good aggregate tempo the feel of how things are, I'll sort of listen, you know, what, what's kind of going on in the rest of the orchestra. It, it just sort of, it, it has a way of just soaking in. I can really, it's really, off, I, it's hard to explain, but I can really tell when people have, have a real knowledge of the piece mm -hmm. they're playing rather than just reading their one line, um, which is very easy to do in an orchestra. You, you stop thinking, oh yeah, this is the most important thing ever. Um, whereas we're obviously totally part of, a team and right it's I, yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, one of my, my main things that i that i really kind of look for i suppose right. <laughs> Max, that 
that was so valuable. Thank you. Uh, we had several questions and comments. I didn't want to interrupt the flow while you were giving so much valuable information. So I'll just, uh, I'll just kind of read them out and the ones that I remember. <laughs> um, uh, we'll uh, go backtrack. Um, the I remember Rizwan because I know him. <laughs> He's a violist uh, in DC, and he said it was very helpful uh, what you were saying about preparing because he's preparing for auditions himself. Um, and then the same person from Canada, um, I forget the 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 Instagram handle. We're asking um, if when you do recordings at Air Studio and Abbey Road, uh, if you perform with familiar musicians <laughs> oh yes we've recorded with gosh I mean I you know I'm I'm really one for taking selfies with sort of famous artists and stuff as a kind of memento for myself I used to keep an autograph book oh wow it's really funny isn't it when you when you get when you people ask you and you think actually I can't even think of who, the, who these people are now but we've you know we work with uh you know obviously we've recorded a lot of film soundtracks so um things like a lot of the Harry Potter films I would have um played on um lots of uh soundtracks with say Alexandre Desplat so things like Shape of Water which which won an Oscar um, things like that and then we we do a lot of commercial recordings um, so you know we did something with K Jamie Cullum who's you know pianist it's, it's really really wide ranging I mean I remember we recorded some Christmas music with Tony Bennett once <laughs> so things just sort of really it can be sort of any it can be so uh -huh. off the wall and and different and and obviously I like I particularly like recording film soundtracks just because I love films and um, I, you know, I'm very likely to go and see it. And, and often you'll get, well, the director's usually there. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll get people like George Clooney coming to watch um, uh, things like that. And actors will often come in because it's, it's the last, music will be the last thing that goes on. So they're quite interested to see how it's all going to fit. And, mm -hmm. and I find it fascinating to, to see how the whole thing just kind of mm -hmm. melts together once music goes on the top and how quickly they need to make a decision and change things because it's not exactly what what they were looking for um so yeah there's there's just i mean the orchestra has an incredible discography of of different you know i mean one of my favorite things actually it wasn't a recording it was a concert but we we did a big concert with frankie valley and the four seasons i mean anyone of a certain age will, will know who that is but that you know all these really famous um songs and things so it's it is fun i i do <laughs> like you road and air that's for sure that's great um thank you and then um i forgot questions already but one let me see if i could find oh uh timothy chui uh asks does your perspective in terms of teaching change if, it, if a student is applying for an american orchestra or a european one? Oh, oh, that's really <laughs> Hi Timmy, that's a really good question. I don't, I mean, I don't teach per se, like have students myself. I only, you know, if somebody is coming to me to do, if somebody wants to come to me before they're doing an audition, that's, I can kind of prepare them. That's how I feel. I think um, because also American orchestras generally behind the screen. I mean, we've started doing behind the screen auditions as well. I what the impression I got very much from colleagues who might have auditioned and people my friends in American orchestras technical perfection is really really important because you are a number a faceless number behind the screen and it's very the the easiest way for a panel behind is to just say well there was a wrong note there and that's kind of like you know there there will be people who are just kind of perfect um obviously when you express yourself it's much easier to see a whole person's expression and their entire um way of musicality when you can see them um but yeah you know i do understand blind auditions take away a real element of any bias 
because you have no idea who's behind there. And we certainly started doing that mm. in the last um, two or three years. Uh, because also, you you know, you often have lots of friends coming to audition or your, <laughs> you know, there were, there were spouses and all sorts of, you know, so you think, well, actually, we really don't want to know who it is. And, you know, if you're just number one to 10, then it's fine. But I think, um, I, I think I may be wrong because I've, I've never had to prepare somebody for who was doing an American audition. But I, I do think that technical the technical perfection is something that is like really, really important. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Uh, thank you. Um, well, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, well, we'll be, I'll be better about um, targeting um, and letting everyone know about when to ask questions because we've already gone over time. So I want to be mindful. Um, but uh, thank you so much for joining us, Maxine. Your wealth of infant knowledge and uh, insight has been so amazing, so generous of you. <laughs> I'm not playing anything, but I did bring my violin. So oh, yes, I wanted to ask you. I forgot. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not playing anything because I was like, I haven't played for a couple of days. But I just oh, that's so cool. Can you <laughs> lift it a little higher? Yay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to do a screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool i love how it looks with your mute yeah <laughs> the pop red ball you know so cool. but yes i've been a big fan of yours since you started as i know you were the very first and one day we will meet <laughs> i know one day we will meet <laughs> you know i have two good friends from in uh from london and one lives in london and i have yet to visit her since this whole thing happened so it's due but when i do go there i i will definitely let you know or and vice versa if you come to new york first. yeah usually we would come to new york pretty much every year so yeah. it will happen <laughs> <laughs> so but thank you for inviting me i'm of always happy to talk and if people want to drop me a a question or something please just do it in the messages and i i can always try and help as best i can oh thank you <laughs> yes if you if you guys know max uh, maxine's instagram it's maxine quack i will be tagging her in the when i post the recording of this video so um she's offering so if i were you i would <laughs> <laughs> definitely hit her up <laughs> well thank you again thank you ev thanks everyone for joining <laughs> thanks bye. take care bye you too bye, bye.